Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. We'll call this something like Season 2 of The Unkillables, or as they turned out at the end of yesterday's episode, very much killable. So today was supposed to be my day off, because my parents have traveled, like, three hours to come to the other side of the country to come and visit me in my home. Uh, and I said to my- I looked my mother in the eye, I looked her in the eye, and I said, Be gone, thought, there is only RimWorld in this life. Uh, and it was- it was horrible. No, okay, so I was actually supposed to be having a day off today, but to be honest, after the mess of an episode yesterday, I decided that I'd come back to it and we- we would at least get it off the ground, you know? Try and- and I'll show you some of the changes I've made here, and commit to a brand new start, based on your feedback, and based on some new ideas, uh, etc, etc, and obviously some mod changes. It was, however, confirmed to me by a mod developer that the mod pack we had before uh, and they, I, I sent them my save, basically, and they said, your save was fucked. Something to do with where we reordered, obviously, some of the mods. We removed some mods, replaced some mods. The AI was still being treated as the highest difficulty, even though we'd moved it down to difficulties. So, for whatever reason, we were, getting, we, were, we were getting way more raids than we should, far more frequently than we should. Hence why we had two sieges from the same faction followed up by the Mechanoids yesterday. Uh, it's been confirmed to me that, that shouldn't have happened, and I think that was fairly obvious anyway. This time around, I have almost an identical mod pack with some of the inconveniences, I would say, taken out. A lot of people thought that the attrition mod, the mod that gave us ammo, was not massively fun. So, uh, and I think it was more of an inconvenience more than a difficulty increase. So I've gone ahead and removed that one from the mod pack. Obviously, we've removed the diseases mods from the mod pack because they were a little bit too heavy on diseases. It started off where we were having nothing but diseases after disease and no raids. And then it went to obviously too heavy the other way around. But we couldn't fight the raids because we had nothing to fight the raids with. So this is hopefully a nice middle ground. Now, of course, you've also got a lot of experience this time around, too, with, with the installation and things like that. Now, on that subject, I've also made a... Uh, I, I've also made a new scenario here. Very basic. It's the, it's the scenario we had before, but with biomass installation unlocked by default. Now, of course, the biomass one wasn't very good. It wasn't very good installation, but in the first season, especially in the first year here, it will allow us to get off the ground pretty quickly, and we can plan out a base. You know, we could build an insulated base from the get-go rather than fucking around building a wooden base, then building an insulated base, then trying to get rid of it and replace it with stone. We'll aim... We'll, we'll start very small and expand out as a luxury rather than starting out big and then getting insulation as a luxury rather than a necessity, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Let's get into things here. So to make things a little bit easier this time as well, we'll be playing Perry Persistent. I do love Perry Persistent as a storyteller. Was a little bit too aggressive last time. We did, to be fair, start on Merciless, drop it down to Blood of Dust, and then drop it down to Strive to Survive. This time we're just going to start on Strive to Survive. Starting on Merciless and bringing it down meant that we still didn't have the infrastructure necessary to survive because Merciless has beat us over the head at that point. So with Strive to Survive, we should be able to, in the early game especially, when it will probably be far too easy for us to be able to build up quite decently. And then when Yeo's Planet and things start kicking in, we should be more than prepared. The other thing I've done as well, based on feedback, is I've adjusted some of the characters this time. They more represent the characters they were in their series, with some caveats, again, based on their backstories that I gave them at the start of next series. Should we just go for like, let's go for 25%, because choosing our starting point is going to be fairly essential this time around. Okay, that looks pretty good. That we can work with that. So what I'm thinking is I like the idea of the of the planes, but we need more of an environment to work off of. So we could go for like temperate forest and we could go for say large hills or small hills. Uh to be honest, I like that one. It's a shame the, the tribal settlement is there. Um go for like small was it small hills we were on last time though, or was it a plains? I don't entirely remember. We could go for grassland. 40 out of 60 days growing time. The average temperature is very neutral all around. It's large hills there as well. I quite like the look of that one. And we've got a coast. So we've got a lot of things there that will give us defensibility. So I, th I quite like the idea of this one. We'll piss off the, the Chromacan nation, Chromacan, anymore because we've taken their land. Okay, let's go ahead and load the preset. And I'll show you what I've done with the, sh the characters again. This is a lot of feedback from yesterday's comment section on Discord as well. I've made the characters... More min maxi, which obviously makes things a lot more fragile, because it means if we lose Sharamus, whereas last time Sharamus was good at mining, now he's got construction. I've taken construction away from Robo Daddy. If we use, lose Sharamus now, we won't have a builder. If we lose Robo Daddy, we won't have a medic. Uh, I've given Robo Daddy social to make up for the fact that I've moved construction over into Sharamus. I've tried to keep the points the same as last time, but I've I've, I've dished them out differently. So we're, we're still relatively within the points limit. What is the points limit? Um, oh, apparently the points limit is like five, uh, 5,200. Obviously not. Um, 
But with regards to last series, I've kept the points relatively similar. Same with their passions as well. So when they had kind of minor passions in some things, I've decided to min-max them so everyone has a job. It means that all of our starting characters are equally as important. Whereas Robo Daddy last time, let's be honest, was doing the recruiting, he was doing the researching, the managing, the building, everything. Didn't really seem fair. In terms of equipment, I varied it a little bit. So we've got tools, we've got a, we've got some starting weapons here rather than just hunting rifles. And that's it. With regards to difficulty, it's not that much easier, but I think the easier start is going to be a massive difference. Without playing on Merciless, without having to fight uphill to start off with here, I think this is going to be a much better start, because it means we can focus on the installation early on, and then after the installation is dealt with, and we've got that in a permanent state of equal temperature, we don't have to worry about the planet so much, we can focus on the radar side of things. So let's get into it. I will update the Steam Workshop collection as well, for those of you who want to play along with my current changes. This looks like something we can work with as well. You know, we've got a lot of... Although the, um, obviously the open fields are quite nice to play with, we do have here a lot of natural defenses. We've also got... Look at these massive swaths of rich soil as well. Very nice. So I'm thinking we'll use this as a big open area to grow our crops. Then what, if, what do you think about building a... a it, uh, like houses in the, in the outside of that we get down some walls to start off with like a wall across there um a wall across there diagonally up to there diagonally and then maybe like a cross and down we'll plan something out as we go here rather than trying to do something <laughs> stylish with the circle base which worked out obviously horribly we'll start in the center here do we have any structures that i can take apart because the i want to avoid this series i'm making a promise here not to build anything permanent out of wood so if we can take apart this marble, for example, and get down a basic structure, I'm all about that. I think that's going to work out so, so much better this time. Apparently, Fingers already started with an axe, which is quite helpful too. Right, let's go ahead and allow all. Sharamus has slightly higher shooting skills. Robo Daddy also has slightly higher shooting skill too. His shooting skill last time was fucking garbage. Um, but now, obviously, I've, I've kind of tried to reflect that in his character set here. So let's get these boys equipped. Okay, um, let's give Sharamus the Builder the hammer. Um, how do we get him to do it? Is it like you, where you can scum it up, right? You can do it like that, and then he can equip both? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's nice that that still works. I mean, it just means he won't be able to haul as much, right? You equip that as a sidearm, then you can equip that one as a sidearm. Nice, everyone's got a decent tool. And then we've also got the scalpel, because Robo Daddy is, at the end of the day, a doctor. Doctor Robo Daddy to you. So I feel like he deserves his uh, scalpel there as a separate little sidearm as well. The wood, I was thinking campfires, fuel, that type of thing, rather than a structure. If we desperately need a base, and like furniture and things like that, if we desperately need a base, we could just put down, I guess, a wooden structure to start off with here. I want to get these things taken apart, though. So let's start with that and try and get something basic down. So what have we got here? Um, lots of marble walls. Okay, you know, I'm just going to start as we mean to go on. Dig those up. And let's go and take apart every stone structure and just focus on getting that done first. Steel. Well, I mean, it's still just as useful, isn't it? We've got more steel up there. We will dig up the floor tiles at one point. Maybe in the future when we've already got a stretch down, because obviously that takes a little bit longer. Our schedule's going to be very straightforward this time, because everybody, like I said, has their own job to do. So we're going to go basic rearm refuel just for the first time. Once we've actually got a warden this time around, which was a massive problem with the last time. We are going to stick to the same rules as the last series. So save and try and recruit everybody we possibly can. Obviously, the uh, Yayo's planet and things will still be in effect as well. But this way... Again, everybody's got their own job, which was definitely a problem last time. The, the lines were a little bit blurred, and the lines were also blurred badly. Like, everyone was kind of kind of badly skilled. So when one person went down, the whole colony came to a grinding halt, which is, again, going to be the same here. But even when the colony was going full speed, like, Sharamus didn't have, or Robo Daddy didn't have the construction that Sharamus has now, for example. Anyway, and also, Sharamus has all his limbs this time, which should help out quite a lot. Let's go harvest growing. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do something like this. Just to start off with, forget about mining for the time being. Plant cutting go top priority as well. And we'll try and get some... The other big problem I had last time was, of course, not getting crops down early enough. We started with insulation. Let's immediately grow on one of those big growing zones with a higher fertility. A shitload of hay. I think that will help out quite a lot. So delivery, we want you and you to take that as high priority. Get rid of that. Let's move those. Uh, let's keep those on three. You can go, you can go, you can go, and you can go. Okay, pretty happy with that. Might even move stone cutting up to like tier two. Yeah. Just so that we can try and get some perimeter walls down. Okay. Go team go. I'm actually a lot happier with this map this time too. Like it's got... It's got character. You know, it's got character. It's got places we can expand to. It's, it's got a lot of natural defenses as well. Which means the onus isn't on us to put down 
an absurd amount of very early infrastructure. We can use what the game has kind of given to us naturally here. Somebody said in, in Discord as well that the only way they've really found how to survive this is using mountain bases um, or using extensive killbox because some of the raider addition changes to this mod pack are really significant. Like, for example, the sapper changes, the advanced AI, uh, them avoiding traps and where other raiders being killed frequently so that there's a big area of turrets. They'll try and go around it. So it makes things obviously a lot less effective. Oh, that schedule's a bit fucked, isn't it? Let's go and get you guys working on that too. There we are. I'm feeling a lot more confident this time around. Especially now that we know that the installation works pretty decently too. Is that gold? Holy shit, we can actually work on a multi-analyzer too this time. That was one thing that we couldn't do at all. While Sharamus is taking those apart and getting some blocks in for a basic structure, like we've already got 28 marble. That's something. Like that's an external wall, right? We'll get Robert Daddy and Fingers working on a hay growing zone. Do you want to turn all of that into a hay growing zone? That seems like it could be quite extensive in hindsight. That's a lot of hay. Um... Let's do, like, just this area across. What do you think? So maybe, like, there? That seems pretty good. And let's go hay grass on that one. Want to make sure, one of the big th issues we had last time as well was no early medicine. So I think an expansion with some of that down. Excuse me. Oh, I want to match. Sorry, my bad. Um, some of that down straight away as well on some of this higher fertility soil would come in kind of handy. Let's go up to, let's go up to, like, there. I'm fine with that one. Let's also just go ahead and expand that one out. There we are. So we're not using... Okay, we're not losing any slots of the high fertility. Let's go for heal root on you. For this smaller area, I'm going to use for cloth, I think. Oh, no, wait. We did agree in the end that, that cloth was just better to grow in general, wasn't it? Um, because that obviously was able to be crafted into insulation slabs, which, of course, was better for... Um, which, which was a higher tier of insulation. So I'm going to use this small zone for that. What, what should we do with this small zone? Like something... Something important, but we won't need in such a big amount. What are those chem fuel plants? We had some of those, didn't we, last time? Um, or, or we were going to grow some. So let's go ahead and match that instead. Let's do something like... Oh, shit, that's annoying that we're going to miss out on that one block. I'll make sure I match it up in a second. There we are. Let's do something like that. And on this one, so we can only grow the chem root on... 120% fertility soil. And I believe this counts, does it not? 140%. Right, so we used that last little bit there. I think that's fine. I might shrink down the medicine a little bit just to allow for a little bit more chem fuel. If they've done something like overly sensitive plants as well. Um, I was going to see if they had like like plants that had over their sensitivity too. Like 120% fertility. So if you plant them in fertile soil, they grow really fast. Maybe for like a crappy crop that doesn't yield much normally. Um, so we don't want to waste this area or anything but the 100% sensitivity. I guess corn would be good for its long winter shelf life. Sure, we'll do corn, um, especially given that gives a higher yield as well. Let's go ahead and match that one all the way over to there. Okay. Um, then we'll put down something like... I just want to get down a zone and then we'll match it in a second. What about on this one? The tomatoes, strawberries. I don't really know what to vary this with. Um, so animals... Okay, right. So crops have special things, don't they? So... Um, tomatoes are easily removed from the vine without having to uproot the plant. If we start growing those at the start of the cycle, I imagine it means that there's less work throughout the whole period. So we could, say, do something clever like forbid corn for a little while, and then just as we go into winter, we cook up all the corn or, or something like that, um, so that they can obviously sit on the shelf for ages. Um, I think growing some of those early on is probably for the best, seeing as the vine apparently isn't removed. So let's get some of those down as well. Then we put down some cabbages too. Now, cabbages have a lower for sen fertility sensitivity and a lower fertility requirement, so maybe not the right place there, but we will put down at some point because they are immune to toxin and radiations. That means if there is a toxic fallout, we've got a crop coming in. Like some contingency planning there. Like somewhat unnecessary contingency planning too, to be honest with you. Um, what about like... Yeah, so onions are unaffected by blight. What about some peas? Oh, their fertility is quite low. Um... Rice? Pff, fuck it. I mean, rice is always a good one to go for. And that's also in a relatively small area, so it's not gonna, they're not going to spend days and days and days of their life harvesting crops and working on rice there. So let's put down another quick growing zone. This might be way too many crops early on, I will admit, but we might as well be... Uh, we might as well be somewhat clever about it. We might, as well, we might as well try and get some down as soon as possible, right? And then we'll also drop some onions there. It, no, no, no. Cabbages there in case of toxic spill. It's a little bit crazy. It's very unlikely, but we might as well get it done. Between these guys with their tools as well, it shouldn't take him too long to get all this planted. Yeah, I mean, look at them go. And he, bear in mind, Robidelli is very neurotic. So he's going to be able to plant this very, very fast, particularly when he's got that uh, w with these axes as well. So the cool thing is, because of simple sidearms and vanilla tools expanded, whatever, they'll automatically swap to those, and those will give the faster work speeds as well. 
Okay, it's a good job we spawned him in that second. That was like just purely random there. That was just purely one of the random scenario tools. How are we doing with these blocks then, Sharamus? Pretty good job by the looks of it. There we go. That's bringing a lot. Okay, good shit. Right, we might be able to get down to structure. Stick down some very, very basic recreation just for the timing so these guys can do something. And I'll give them a couple of hours of rec as well. Otherwise, they'll go a little bit mad. Oh, sorry, Sharamus is the builder now. That's going to throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna get a little confusing for a while. Huh? Um, what do we want to do here? I was gonna do something then. I can't remember what. Oh yeah, go back to their assignment. Oh sorry, the schedule. Give them a couple of hours of wreck. So we've got six. Uh, okay, yeah. So if we do it like that, then they've got six hours of sleep there. So we give them another two there to make up the full eight. Now, bear in mind, until the cloth grows, we can't even build beds anymore. So we might have to go out hunting in a second. We've got any wildlife that are got muffalo? Yeah, that'll do it. Those always give a nice amount of meat, and more importantly, a good amount of leather too. Uh, to that, or we go and make ourselves some nice guinea pig sleeping rolls. Which, to be honest, sounds incredible. That would be incredibly comfy. Oh, that's not what you want to see from your first hunt, is it? Oh, fingers. Oh, you madman. He's going to fist fight a muffalo. Oh, he's been disarmed. He is actually fist fighting a muffalo. You fucking idiot. Who's closer? Oh, God. They're miles away. Robo Daddy, I need you to haul ass here, brother. Fucking fingers. Okay, he actually did manage to fist fight a muffalo there with only one bruise. Never mind, I take that back. He's, he's on it. What a madman. A bolt goods trader already. That was very, very fast, huh? My God, there's loads of them. And muffalo revenge. Oh, it's the whole thing. Okay, okay. Oh, wow. What a position, huh? <laughs> I hate you. Why would you stand there? Okay, so fingers is fucked. Unbelievable. The first hunt and he goes and stands there. Oh, shit, Sharamus. Why are you so slow? Stone skin clan. Oh, right. Because, of course, it's still it's still Sharamus with his broken limbs and whatever. Oh, well, this is just going swimmingly, isn't it? Right. Robo Daddy, we better patch him up. It's a good job you guys are immortal. Otherwise, this would have gone badly. But Daddy's been elected for saving everybody's life. I think that's fair. Um, luckily, the damage wasn't too severe. It was just a bunch of bruises. Bear in mind, it was only Muffalo at the end of the day. Right, okay. And uh, our, uh, our friends there from the trade cavern ended up doing a lot of hunting on our behalf. Much appreciated. Let's get some bedrolls down. Sharamus, unfortunately, did develop an infection. But again, he's immortal, so it doesn't really matter too much for the time being. Um, what's the immunity like? Oh, he's also fine. 32% immunity, 17%... Infection. What was the 10 quality? 88% from herbal medicine on the floor. Robo Daddy pulling out there in the clutch. Holy shit. Give him another full day of summing crops. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I appreciate that one. God, this storyteller. I, I, I mean, it, it's still insane, isn't it? Even when he's trying to be kind and generous, it's still like hitting hard. How long have we got? So 1.1 day before it starts to rot. First thing we'll do then is we'll get Sharamus up on his feet and we'll go and build some walls around it. And you know what? I think we'll plan that out now. Just a very small zone. Maybe that we can try and keep cool uh, to, to store these guys in. You know, we'll build that out of wood. Just a very temporary freezer that we can then pull apart later on. Um, let's put something there. Again, tiny. Just for storing meat. And what I will do to try and emphasize how small they want this thing to be is some sort of... Oh, meat rack? Do we not have that anymore? Culinary. Oh, shit. <laughs> Huh. I could have sworn we had a meat rack. Maybe that was from the other mod. Okay, fair enough. Um, I guess just stick them on a stick them on a shelf. You can put corpses on a shelf. What about in a skip? Just put a just put a big old skip full of corpses. It's like a cannibal corpse album. Turns out you can't put down a skip full of corpses, but it will come in handy for other storage. I tried putting them on shelves as well. Um, better man, it allows fresh and it allows for animal corpses in the selection. Um, but despite the fact that's set to critical and this one's set to preferred, I still can't. There's no option to haul these urgently still. I don't entirely know why. Um, yeah, found no items that require hauling. I don't know why that is, why they can't go on the shelf there. I know that corpses aren't really supposed to go on a shelf. So I was get, instead just going to compromise and put down a... Because um, we've got 13 hours before these spoil, right? If we butcher them very, very quickly, the meat will just reset, essentially, how long we can keep it in there before we have to deal with it somehow. I guess we'll end up cooking it all into meals. Um, should we put down some floors in there, too, so they're not working on the dirty floor? And food poisoning very much, very early on, did screw us over quite heavily, didn't it? Why don't we also get down basic production here? So let's go for, oh yeah, culinary and a butcher's table. Sharamus, if you could do that as well. Oh, God. Oh, hang on. That's a meteorite shower. Okay. Whew, I thought we were from meteor already, especially when we haven't really got a building we can hide in. Right, let's butcher's creature do forever, and then we'll do that within a radius of the freezer so he's not running around to every point on the map. Right, fingers, let's get you butchering. How long have these got? Five hours. If he's fast... If he's fast, we can. Come on. Oh, storing on the shelves takes time, doesn't it? 
We're good. Nothing to worry about. Plenty of meat, and we've got enough for bedrolls there too. So we'll get bedrolls down as a top priority here. Blue fur bedrolls, we can get three of them. We could also put down a very small amount of temporary furniture. So if we put down a dresser, we can always install that into one of their bedrooms. Um, if we put that like there, and then if we give them all an end table, that will give them a little bit of comfort as well. 1.5 days before all that meat spoils. It would be a shame to lose it this early on. Let's go ahead and mine all the connected ores there, and let's mine out just enough steel to... Hopefully get down a wind turbine and one cooler. Now, who's our miner? Still Sharamus, correct? Yeah, I thought it might be. Um, let's take him off of Harvesting Grind. It's a bit pointless when the other guys have already dealt with that and they're better. Let's get you over here as soon as possible to mine this stuff out then. Hammer obviously doesn't affect that at all. But the fact that he is no longer a tumor-filled mass definitely does help out with the with the mining side of things. Oh, yeah. oh we've got a slaver as well. Why don't we see what they sell? We haven't really got much to trade now, unfortunately. Uh, right, okay. Um, that gives us... I mean, unless he botches it, that is enough, right? Because cooler's only one component. They are three components. Wow. I've never played... I've, I've never played this game. We've been over that a thousand times. I've not actually really played this game before. Relatively new. Oh, did we start with some steel? We got it from when we dismantled all of the, uh, all of the buildings. Right, good. Okay, okay. Um, so we've got five components set. We've actually got enough now to set up some power. And hopefully, all I can ask for right now is just getting a freezer. Um, if we set this up right as well, if we put it like, if we were to put it like there, no, 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 put it that way around. Shit, I want to put it somewhere where not many trees are going to grow. I mean, to be fair, that's almost perfect. Let's put it, put it, put it there, and then we'll just connect up. We'll just expand these farms out a little bit so they fully surround it. A raid already. Okay, how are we looking in terms of raid difficulty? This will be... Okay. I mean, it's the, it's your introductory raid, isn't it? These are, these are never particularly difficult. We should be fine. Oh, especially since we've got a fucking caravan right there. Oh, come on. Fine. There we go. Problem solved. Well done, everyone. Are you worth recruiting, perchance? Um, alcohol addiction, alcohol tolerance. We can't, unfortunately, help them with that. Chemical interest. Steadfast. Nimble is quite nice. Yikes. I'd like to recruit this guy, but I think in this situation where we don't even have a building for our people, that's not going to happen. Power's on. Power's on. There we go. Okay. Look at this. Freezer. Freezer. Come on. Boom. Very nice. I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. Now we've got plenty of meat for, for a very, very, very long time here. Whoa, look at that. They glow. And that's all the crops down as well. Honestly, I thought that was a, a little bit too ambitious in terms of crops, but that's looking okay. Next step then. Let's get a structure down. I'm doing this all completely the wrong order I would normally do it in, but it's probably only for the best, really. Right, so secure uh, structure, sorry. Let's go for marble walls. Let's just go for a, how big can we make a marble wall base? somewhat small, but we actually can wrap around what we've got here in marble. 130. How's that happened? A second ago, we had more than that. Oh, uh, hang on. There we are, 120. So we can wrap around this bedroom, if you want to call it that. And I think it's a temporary thing. That's not too bad. Transport pod crash. Hey! Oh, fuck. <sighs> Classic story of us again not having a prison. Poor medic, ironwheel, beautiful, bisexual, 12 medical, 9 intellectual. You're pretty good. 12 medical is quite nice as a backup doctor there. Um, we'd have to put them in the freezer. <laughs> um, if we drop the freezer's temperature down... Oh, to be fair, the power surge has done that. Yeah, okay. So the wind turbine's not actually putting out enough power for that right now. Fine. Apparently also got six medicine. So one of the traders that died, or perhaps they left it as a gift. Can't say I even noticed. Um, well, let's put them in there. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, but potentially not life-threatening always. Especially if I maybe drop it to refrigerated rather than freezing. You know, the meat can still end up lasting a month at that point, And our colonist, our, our, our prisoner then, can end up lasting a little bit longer. Three condition in tenant. Okay, so you're not going to die in a hurry. We could potentially get a prison built as well in that time. He's fine. There we go. Food bin Sharamus. Coward. Uh, let's go ahead and recruit him. Brilliant. The first harvest already. Wow, that grew fast. Shit. <laughs> that is insane. Okay. I can't believe that. I, we've only been here like a few days, though. Seven days and the rice... I suppose that's the bonus of uh, obviously getting on this rich soil as soon as possible, huh? That's insane. Um, the rice honestly might be a pain in the ass. It might grow a little bit too fast. Let's go ahead and swap that out for corn. More corn? No, we've already got corn. Uh, something else that's 100% sensitivity. What about, like, oh, we've already got tomatoes as well. Potatoes are a bit pointless. Go for eggplant. Uh, do you want me to fill and roll the main component of the dish? Flourishes in warm weather. Sure, it's 29 degrees. That was fast. Resistance has been broken already. To be fair, we are basically torturing the dude. Episode 1, we've gone for war crimes. Guantanamo, permanent minus 5. 
our prison. Permanent minus five. We trapped this man in a in a wooden coffin, chilled him, and then surrounded him with meat. I'm in. I thought it was someone quickening them, but it's a bloody flash storm, isn't it? One thing I've put down here in a fairly high priority is the manager's desk. That way we can focus pretty damn fast on making sure that we've always got the right amount of... Come on. Charamus and Robert, Robert Daddy and Fingers are fighting about what? Show me. Social. Robert Daddy accidentally insulted Fingers. It's like, hey, why are, you, why are you called that anyway? Just saw red. Flew into a rage. And of course, we all know the story of why Fingers is called Fingers, am I right? Is it ever established why Fingers was called Fingers? <laughs> I don't remember what... I'm sure I gave some very funny and very stupid explanation in a video about why Fingers was called that. It was in the anime series. Oh, God, you know what? Leave it there. In hindsight, I'm starting to piece it all together now. We got him already. Robert Daddy asked Peter to join. Peter is accepted to join Robert Daddy's community. Well, shit. Um, that's four bedrooms more than what we currently have that I need. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom's quite nice, though. Obviously, quite a comfortable place. Do we have enough blue fur to build another copy of that? We do. Um, give me another fucking end table, too, then. My God. In terms of managing, let's make sure we've always got enough wood. That's the only thing I really care about right now. No anima trees. Um, can all on the map. Let's calculate distance based on actual paths. The only thing I really care about. And let's go for 500 wood. I think that's probably enough, especially if we want to start getting some, some chem fuelery. That's pretty fine. Um, and for hunting, count all on map. Uh, attack herd animals that do not explode. I think that's safe. So deers, as it says there, deers, donkeys, bison, buffalo, whatever, it'll attack those, that's fine. No human meat, no insect meat, and unforbid corpses too. Restrict hunting to anywhere is fine. Target count, 500. We've currently got 1,295 meat. That's okay as well. Um, livestock is, is irrelevant. Foresting is probably pretty irrelevant as well. Mining could be useful. Um, I was ensure we've got some in storage. You know, I've not actually used it ever to designate new mining jobs and actually that's not a bad idea let's go compacted steel uh let's make sure we've got how much compacted steel at all times do you think um check for roof supports oh yeah i like that idea um let's go for i think 500 steel at all times is not a bad shout um in terms of compacted machinery i think that's absurd so we'll drop that right down uh, to... Shit, I mean, compacted... Oh, that's adjusting the job. Oh, shit, sorry. I've, I've unticked that and I should have done new job. That's my bad entirely. Hang on. I see how it works now. Uh, so we do that and then we go new job to go for compacted machinery. Yeah, there we are. Compacted machinery, six. Fine. Um, that's good as well. Uh, that's multiple? What the fuck do you mean that's multiple? Uh, all. Oh. Oh, I see, right. Um, compacted machinery. I don't know why that counts as multiple when we're quite clearly only mining one thing, but maybe that's just a UI issue. Okay, so that one's getting us steel. That one's getting us compacted machinery. Um, maybe it's because there are multiple sources that provide compacted machinery. That's more likely, isn't it? Um, for the time being, then that's fine. And then we'll just let them get on with that at all points. That way, Sharmus can focus on the building, and maybe we could do some stone cutting early on instead. That's a better idea. Right, so Robert Daddy, let's put you as top priority. So what are you good at again? We can have you as our researcher while Robert Daddy does his ship. By the way, he's a good crafter. He's a good grower. Uh, warden as well. Yeah, that's not a bad plan. Oh, Robert Daddy apologized to Fingers. Fingers did not accept the apology. That's for accidentally calling him Fingers, I assume. Right, okay. So stone cutting is my next priority then. Like I said, I am no longer building bases out of wood. I'm, th I'm sure I've said that every series, but this series, I mean it. Floors, fine. Furniture, fine. Actual external structure, fuck it. Let's go for, um, where do you want to start then? Should we go for electric stone cutters, Tim? Let's maybe get a couple of those down. We will need some more form of, we will need some better forms of power if we're going to do that. There's so much of an issue with that, I guess. Um, are these also going to probably short circuit out in the rain, aren't they? We do have 75 granite blocks, 75, what have we got the most of here? Um, 249 granite blocks, that sounds fine to me. Let's get a structure built out of that, like a temporary workroom or something. Battle animal wandering. Whoa! <laughs> it just gave us two free mega slots. Okay. Not complaining at all about that. Um, we could train them to haul as well. I'm not going to probably train them to be battle animals. We've got anyone good at handling. Oh, the new guy. Oh, fine. Yeah, handle and train those then. That's your job. Oh, the meat. Why? Oh, because the bloody turbine's not running as uh, good, good enough to keep it cool. Okay, it's just kicked in again. Oh, that's a shame. Um, do forever. Just cook until you can cook no more, my friend. If we are going to cook until we cook no more, let's see if we can get down the stove. Yeah, we can. 
Um, otherwise, I think we're going to ask for trouble when it comes to cooking all of our meals on the dirt. I think that's probably a poor idea. Let's go ahead and clear prioritize work. And let's also go ahead and suspend that. Um, and then preferably haul that. Oh, God, it's gone off again. Fuck. Um, have we got time to do this? Is probably a better question. Get that shit out of there. Uh, sorry, skip. I misspoke. YouTube. Please don't, please don't take my channel down. Right. Oh, oh my meat. My meat. To be fair, we hunted them for the beds. And beds they beds they did. Um, laugh. Let's, let's go expert colonist. And let's go. I like doing 12. Um, I've only got four meals a piece. Or I should say four days worth of meals. Um, wait, do they though? Was it 16? Three meals a day? I don't know. <laughs> I said that with such conviction, but now I'm not entirely sure. Fuck it, we'll do that. That's fine. Okay, stone cutting room is almost done. Whenever Sharamus decides to uh, finish the fucking job, Chief. Hello? Hunting Muffalo. Oh. What was that? <gasps> An immortal something. An immortal what? What just came back? Hair. <gasps> An immortal hair. The hair died. Oh, it's killed by a minigun fire. When it walks in front of... Uh, someone's slave. Thing. Who do we want to make immortal first, though? That's the real question. I think Sharamus. Bear in mind... Oh, my God. The Megasloth's can nozzle. That's cool. Um, bear in mind that Sharamus is going to be on the front lines. He's got 16.31. Here's the super soldier of the unmortals. Get that hair killed. Get it killed. Did that work? Did he... He destroyed the neck. Wow. He actually went straight for the head. In the words of that big purple ball chinned man. So we actually quickened from that. 0 0.6. That's fantastic. We need a better power solution than this. Because this is shit. <laughs> Wind turbines are shit. They're always shit. They always will be shit. Um, I guess we could put one. If we put it like there. That means we only have to cover a very small area. We're on grasslands too. So the chance of trees really being an issue are very, very low, aren't they? I'd argue this is the one time where wind turbines are probably one of the most effective things to use. Get some more components for anywhere. Uh, yeah, there are some up there. I'm going to send them to actually go and do this very, very quickly. That way we've got a power grid in line. We've got stone cutting ability, so we can start working on a permanent base right out the bat. Ice Age is coming. Okay. I mean, we already kind of expected that, did we not? And there we go. Okay. Hopefully between those two, that'll be enough. Uh, the first research we obviously want to start working on is batteries, I think. After that, we'll work on... Maybe there's a second tier of insulation, because we're getting a lot of animal furs now that I've managed that job. What are you working on that? Was that a lavish meal? That would have been cool. Um, I'm going to put down one stone cutters bench in here, I think, and then one research bench, so we can get batteries down. Um, if we do it like that, I suppose we could do it like... Ooh, hang on. There's got to be a better way to do it than that, right? Um, if we put that there, and then we could put this research bench there. Yeah, and then we can fit a tool cabin up here without taking up much more space. It's interesting. So the, the steel designation, uh, the mining designation, comes from the distance from the desk, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so, so we went for that one down there rather than that one, because apparently that one is closer to get to. But at a glance, I would definitely say that this one is closer. I guess it's taken into account things like that, the, the stony soil, which is nothing I would ever pay attention to, to be honest with you. What did you just eat? What did you just eat there, you little shit? Battery. There we go. Okay, we need some lights in there too, if you don't mind, fella. So let's go ahead and put down a wall light or two if we can. Wow, that's good. And then Beats is already at work. Fantastic. We couldn't get down the file cabinet too. But that way, they've got a nice kind of route in and out. They're not climbing over anyone else. Uh, that needs a little bit more steel, which I think he's working on now. He's getting getting components, fair enough. You know what? I'm happy with that. Let's leave it there for today. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the starting progress. Strangely enough, I feel like... In what took us... I mean, how many episodes was the previous series? I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me pull up my thumbnails folder and I can tell you. Um, in the this one short episode, if we keep the progress going the way we are, I think we can catch up to what took us 12 episodes with the previous series in three. And that's genuinely... I don't believe in overestimation. I think we can catch up quickly. Because I'm going to be... I'm, I'm in. I'm focused. I'm in the zone. Obviously, tomorrow's another day. I might stub my toe or something and be really pissed off and lose all and gain tunnel vision. Which is a problem we'll, we'll, we'll discuss when it happens. But I think as long as we stay on top of things here, we can catch up pretty goddamn fast. The difficulty, like I said, is negligible. I mean, the changes in difficulty are negligible. 
So it's all about making sure this early game is strong so that the latter game, the latter game, meta game, the future game, the Ice Age can be defeated fairly successfully this time. I'm hoping. A big thank you goes out to the patrons, without which uh, I wouldn't be here working on my day off. Thank you to Siphon, Scary Scurvy, Ben Hofflin, Nostra, Slickback, Crane Fixer, Oregon, Skaz, Felpy, Boop, Anthony Gawley, Goatfather, Chris, Buen Gun, Caden Carter, Amethyst Krona, Zetlock, and Commissar Taj for their support over at the insane tier levels on Patreon. A big thank you to these guys. Hopefully this time around we should be able to rename some colonists, given that we've recruited some in episode one this time. I'm feeling a lot more confident this time. Thank you as well to... Super Nanny 089, Prometheo, Tiger Rifter, Demon X Jester, Couch Sitter, Voodoo Mumbo, Warcats, Cogsail, Batimus Max, Deadly Kitten Hunt, Smooth Octopus, Acero, Alex Bogard, Smirtworm, Anchor, Dion, Fat Joe is a toe, Silent Sentinel, and Tempe as well for their support over at Patreon. Thank you to you guys. See you all tomorrow. Hopefully, you guys, you're excited as I am for a new attempt at a fairly difficult scenario.